Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier, the DRF Bets Race of the Day for Saturday, February the 10th, the Grade 3 Sam F. Davis Stakes, Kentucky Derby qualifying points on the line. If you sign up to DRF Bets right now, you can bet on the Sam F. Davis, $200 free bet, no deposit required, drf.com forward slash join. Please use the promo code FREEBET09. Let's take a look at the field of potential Kentucky Derby entrance in the Grade 3 Sam F. Davis Stakes. These three-year-olds will compete for $250,000 at a mile and a sixteenth, and you can access free formulator pass performances of this race on the Race of the Day event page at drf.com. Download them, handicap with us. We'll take the field in post-position order, and a maiden Navy armed guard drew the rail. Yeah, I mean, look, on paper, he's not a bad horse. The problem is the water gets so much deeper in here. He's still a maiden. Um, he's hit the board four out of five lifetime starts, but he's going to need to step his game up incredibly if he's going to be competitive. Last two buyer speed figures on dirt, 80 and 83. It actually, they, Those buyer speed figures actually compare very well to the rest of the field, yep. minus Catholic boys, Remsen, yes. Catholic boy, 8 to 5 is a morning line favorite. Navy Armgar seems to be moving the right way, but a maiden is going to have to step up, as you mentioned, 15 to 1 on the morning line. The number two is Flame Away. Flame Away uh, just won a stakes race at Gulfstream Park on the turf. You get the feeling watching him, looking at his pedigree, that he's more of a turf force, but when he's been given the opportunity to race on the dirt, albeit wet dirt, he's made the most of it. Yeah, that, I guess that's the big thing that I'm not sure what to make of him. I expect him to be forwardly placed in this race, which should work to his advantage. I thought that most recent run, as game as it was from him, I have a really hard time looking at that kitten's joy and being overly positive. I know Speed Frankel came back and won next out, but that race, you had about six horses that were separated by a neck and a half. To me, that's not the sign of a good race, and I know the turf race is usually more bunched up. The big concern is his one fast dirt start was a disaster. He just didn't pick his feet up. I want him to prove to me that he can step on fast, dry dirt. I agree. That was the one race where they actually entered him on dirt. The two yeah. wins came in races washed off of the turf. That was the grade three Iroquois on September the 16th at this distance. No match for Hollywood star who we'll get to in a minute. Do you think Jose Lascano is just on a send here? Yes, considering I don't think there are any other confirmed speeds in this race. There are other horses that have tactical speed that can be forward to me, Flame Away is the one outright sort of forward horse. The only chance I think that he can win is by going. You've also been following the Tampa Bay meet very closely. And early in the meet, it's especially in route races, on dirt, it yeah. seemed that speed was dominant. Have you noticed that trend recently? It's kind of leveled out a little bit. I think the big thing to keep in mind in recent weeks anyway, and it's not not in every single race day, but recent weeks, the outside seems to be really where people are making their hay. So anybody that's been down toward the inside, it seems like you're just kind of running in quicksand. Keep an eye, obviously, on the weather forecast going forward, but maybe just something to keep an eye on throughout the day, considering this is race 10. See how the day is playing. A horse with tremendous amount of potential is the number three, Vino Rosso, undefeated from two starts for trainer Todd Pletcher. Very visually impressive in his career debut at Aqueduct going seven furlongs. Pletcher wanted to get a race over the Tampa Bay track in his final start at two. He caught a terrible field. Yep. Vino Rosso was one to 20. He won. More workmanlike than anything else. Workmanlike, I guess I kind of look at it and, and think it was a horse that doesn't know what he's doing yet. I, I think he's very, very green. You look when he made the front there, Manny Frank, I'm sorry, John Velasquez gave him a quick little crack with the stick. His ears are up, he's flopping around, he got to the wire, he popped back to his left lead. I don't think he knows what he's doing yet, which is probably going to be a problem in here, considering he's going to face at least one horse that we know looks like he could be the goods. I do think the potential here is is tremendous. I, I'm not concerned about the 70 buyer. It's hard to get a fast buyer when there's no pace signed on. I, to me, I'm mo looking at him more as what could be as opposed to what is on the page. The number four is Septimius Severus, debut winner coming from off the pace. Always like to see that with mm -hmm. young two-year-olds. Then in his first start for George Weaver as a three-year-old, just ran into a buzzsaw. Impact player ran away and hid sprinting at Gulfstream Park. Going to have to stretch out around two turns. This horse has shown a little bit of potential. Jose Ortiz takes them out. Yeah, I don't really have any knocks about what he's done on the racetrack. I, and I know this is a really small sample size for George Weaver. Past five years, sprint to route, graded stake. Oh, for seven. None of them have even hit the board. Uh, to me, he's one that needs to prove that he belongs. Dale Roman sends out the five. Hollywood star, five to two on the morning line. Already multiple graded stakes placed in his career. Not going to hold the Breeders' Cup juvenile against him and against the best two-year-olds in the country. A tough post position as well that day. He's run some nice races. Right now, I kind of like him more as a late running one-turn horse, but this horse has some ability. Yeah, certainly. I think right now, anyway, it looks. I go back to that Iroquois, and it bothered me a little bit just because he just seems like he's a 
grinder, going to grind, grind, grind. Um, uh, again, we've got to talk about it. It happened last week with the Holy Bull. It's going to happen here. The formulator fact for Romans. Past five years, 61 to 180 days, graded stakes. He's now 0 for 35, and only six of them have hit the board. If this horse hits the board, I look at it as a positive. The six is Catholic Boy. He is the horse to beat. I want to look at the time form U.S. pace projector. No, Catholic Boy is not going to be on the lead. I want to see where he is, and he is in mid-pack behind the seven vouch. Catholic Boy defeated vouch when they last met the grade two Remsen on December the 2nd. The question before the Remsen was this. If Catholic boy could successfully transfer his excellent turf form to dirt, he's going to be a player. Yep. And boy, did he. He actually exceeded expectations. I, I think he's the goods. Uh, you know, you look and see, and even you've seen some of the tape that's come out of him down at Tampa with a workout. Whoever the mate was had absolutely no chance, and there's really only so much that the riders can do. He looks like he's breathing fire. I don't know how tight he's going to be for his first start as a three-year-old. I don't know how tight the connections want him to be. Um, I have to be honest. I'm, I'm fascinated to see what we get out of him because I think, based on the way so far, you saw how Avery Island came back last weekend when he won the Withers. Clearly, it looks like this is one of the better Remsons that we've seen in recent memory. I, I expect him to run very well on Saturday. You mentioned that he was flattered by Avery Island. Not only was the Remsen fast, a 91 buyer speed figure for Catholic Boy, just visually cruising up with a four wide bid. Manny Franco looking around for the competition and then putting the field and the race to bed when asked for run. I know this sounds very sort of like elementary, but doesn't he look like a derby horse? The way that Certainly he runs, does. the way that he moves, he's a big, good looking horse, and he just carries himself the way that distance not going to be a problem. He can adapt to pace. Obviously, surface doesn't matter. I think he's really, really strong. On the face of the pedigree, the number seven vouch, who is the leader as pertaining to the time form U.S. pace projector, would be a sprinter. He's by yes, it's true, but I think he gets his stamina from the bottom. Broodmare Sire Tis now. Arneo Delacour has not fooled around with sprint races. Very impressive gate to wire winner at Laurel. You like the source a little bit in the Remsen, yep. and considering it was start number two and he ran into a buzzsaw. That was a pretty good effort. I think the source has the potential, and if Catholic Boy and Flame Away kind of let him alone early, he has a chance. Delacour dominates at Tampa. Yeah, it really does. 33% excuse me, on the year. This is a horse that I think there's some ability here. I'm going to be really interested. It feels like Delacour always gets these horses. He's got a really, really high leg action, and I wonder if at some point they're going to try him on the turf, but guess what? Until he does something wrong on dirt, you have no reason to try him on the turf. I think he's nice. I, I'm still... Mm, you know what? I took a shot in the Remsen. I want him to prove again that he actually belongs with these horses. Let's take a look at our top selections for the Grade 3 Sam F. Davis Stakes. You're going to go with Pletcher, the 3 Vino Rosso. Again, we were really blown away by his debut. His last race, okay, he had to go around two turns for the first time. Race at Tampa for the first time. It was a terrible field. It was also a slow pace, and Johnny V did the right thing. It's kept him on the outside away from all kinds of trouble. Uh, if he runs back to his debut, he's going to be tough. My opinion on him is... I. I can't wait to see him in the Tampa Bay Derby. I think he's going to need this race to continue the learning process. What price do you need? He's three to one on the on the uh, line. Yeah, I think that's fair. I, th I need him to float up from there simply because he is green. And you know what? I, I'm not just saying this because it's in recent memory. He reminds me a little bit of not necessarily always dreaming. We all talked about how Pletcher did this was always dreaming. Ran him back at, at Tampa. Johnny V shipped across. He reminds me more of Taprit with a horse that he looks good, but he still doesn't know what he's doing. He needs to iron some things out. Tappert ran really well in the Sam F. Davis, but didn't win. He came back and aired in the Tampa Bay Derby, and we saw what he went on to do last year as a three-year-old. I kind of think that Vino Rosso might be in that same mold. Maybe he's not ready to go on Saturday, and guess what? I'm not going to be surprised if Catholic Boy just rips his face off, but I think going forward, I think Vino Rosso might be okay. I agree. I'm going to keep an eye on Vino Rosso, not only for the Sam F. Davis, but down the road. You're going 3, 6, 2, and 5. I don't really want to have too much money against Catholic Boy. He just won me over with that performance yeah. in the Remsen. As you mentioned, the workout seemed to be really good for a shrewd trainer in Jonathan Thomas. I'm hoping he can do it again. I'll try to get Vouch on the lead sure. into my exact. I'll go 6, 7 in the grade 3 Sam F. Davis. Again, if you're playing the Tampa Bay card for from home on Saturday. Really is a good one. You also have champion world approval making a seasonal debut. A $200 free bet, no deposit required. DRF.com forward slash join is where you need to go. Promo code free bet 09. Approximate post time for the Sam F. Davis, 452 Eastern on Saturday. Good luck.